Today we celebrate the anniversary of the dedication of one particular church building in Rome. And this particular church building in Rome is the Cathedral of Rome. And it's uh, also a basilica because it's an important church. And um, this basilica is called by various names, the Archbasilica of our Holy Savior. It's also known as uh, St. John Lateran. Now, it could easily be the case, though, that some of us in this building have visited that church and some of us haven't. And don't you know that the Catechism obliges us to visit this church three times every year? And you haven't been fulfilling your obligation. Just kidding. It was the case that the temple in Jerusalem, the temple that ended up being destroyed in 70 AD and has not yet been rebuilt, that temple in Jerusalem, the temple that our Lord himself walked through, the temple in which animal sacrifices happened every day of the year, the temple that was supposed to house the Ark of the Covenant, Jews were obliged, male men, were obliged to visit at least three times per year that single solitary building. So, the temple became a central focus of the Jewish religion. It was one particular building in one particular city in one particular land. If you wanted to be a good Jew, you had to go to that place. When the Christian church founded, within a hundred years it had acquired, within a hundred short years, it had acquired a name, and the name was Catholic. The name was Catholic, which is a Greek word which, as you know, means universal. Universal. Coming from the Jewish context, what it means is there is no obligation to worship God in any one particular location. The church was universal. It did not matter whether you were in this country or that country, this city or that city, this building or that building. There was no distinction. There was no obligation to go anywhere. Yes. You will search the catechism up and down. You will never find any obligation to go to St. John Lateran. Now, as it is, it's worth a visit, artistically and spiritually. But there's no obligation to do that. St. John Lateran is not a temple in the way that the temple was a temple. We don't have a temple in that sense. And we might say, well, do we not have a temple just because we haven't built one yet? Or do we not have a temple because our spirituality has changed, our theology has changed? And indeed, we are quite, uh, we are quite right to ask the question, where is or what is the temple of the Lord? What is the temple of the Lord? Is the temple of the Lord St. John Lateran, a particular church in a particular city? Yes, it is the cathedral of the Bishop of Rome, and the Bishop of Rome is the head of the apostles. He's the vicar of Christ. He is our connection to the governance and the sanctification of Jesus Christ. So yes, it is an important building. Yes, the temple of the Lord is St. John Lateran. That is one answer to the question. Where is the temple of the Lord? Another way to answer the question, where is the temple of the Lord, is to say that the Blessed Virgin Mary is the temple of the Lord. She housed God who descended from heaven. God descended from heaven. That same kind of descent is noted in the book of the Apocalypse in our reading today. He said this. St. John said he saw the new Jerusalem descend from heaven. God descended from heaven to dwell in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary. What was the temple of God? It was where God dwelt. 
the Blessed Virgin Mary became where God dwelt. She, at the moment of the Incarnation, became infinitely more important than Solomon's temple. She was where God dwelt. In the Jewish temple, the Ark of the Covenant was supposed to be there, although for the last 600 years it had been missing. It had been missing since the Babylonian captivity, where it was hid in a cave uh, or hid by Jeremiah the prophet. The Ark was no longer there. But they had animal sacrifices still there at the altar. They had the bread of the presence and the menorah, which was a seven-headed candle, which was a sign of the presence of God too. But the glory of the Lord had departed from the temple. The glory of the Lord had departed from the temple because of Jewish sin. But the glory of the Lord came back and overshadowed Our Lady. She became the place where God dwelt on earth. She housed the Ark of the Covenant. She was the Ark of the Covenant. She housed the law of God, the word of God. She was a seat of glory. Where is the temple of the Lord? Our Lady is a prefigurement of the church, the church, the church that Christ has come to found. So where is the temple of the Lord? The temple of the Lord is the church, the mystical body of Christ, the mystical body of Christ, which is where God is dwelling. When Christ took to himself a human nature, that human nature now is a temple of the Lord where the divinity of the Trinity dwells in the humanity of Jesus Christ. He, in his humanity, enjoyed the beatific vision every moment of his existence. Even during the crucifixion, he had the beatific vision and had absolute bliss in the presence of the divinity in his own one person. He, in his own person, is a perfect house of prayer, where in his humanity he adored his own divinity perfectly at all moments, day or night, from the beginning of his conception, and he still does it now. He himself is the presence of the divinity in his sacred humanity. He, Jesus, is the presence of God on earth. And the church that he has founded is the mystical body of Christ, where in this mystical body, he has created a spiritual reality in which we are all dwelling. We are all members. We comprise this mysterious organism. And it it is where God dwells on earth. It is the presence of God, this mystical body of Christ, where we, joined to the sacred humanity of our Lord, adore and pray and sacrifice to the divinity. The church is the temple of God. Jesus is the temple of God. The Blessed Virgin Mary is the temple of the Lord. And yes, each church building is the temple of the Lord too. St. John Lateran, but for all of his artistic glory, if all of its historical glory, St. Joseph's Church in Richmond is as glorious and as is equal a presence of God because we too have God dwelling in the Blessed Sacrament here, just as there. This building too is a temple of the Lord. Where is the temple of the Lord? It's all these things. Now, collectively, we are meant to be the bride of Christ, where we are adorned as a bride for her husband. Adorned with what? We have to be adorned with beauty. What is beautiful? Ultimately, beauty is divinity. Divinity. Only God is essentially beautiful. 
If we imitate God, we are beautiful. If we contradict God, if we are the opposite of God, we are ugly. Where is the temple of the Lord? There is one more answer to the question. What is or where is the temple of the Lord? For this church espouses the presence of God in the Blessed Sacrament. But that presence of God is not merely something that we have the privilege of coming to be in the presence of God. But we receive him in Holy Communion. We receive that God in Holy Communion. So that we, now as recipients of Holy Communion, we become temples of the Lord. We are living, breathing walking temples of the Lord. When we receive our Lord in Holy Communion and adore Him there, we can be, in our own persons, houses of prayer. We can carry the Lord with us and bring Him everywhere we go. When the voice comes from the throne in the book of the Apocalypse, describing this new city that comes down, that descends from God, the voice from the throne says, Behold the tabernacle of God with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself with them will be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. When this new city comes, the people of God will dwell there and there will be no tears. Death shall be no more, nor mourning, nor wailing, nor sorrow shall be any more, for the, for the former things have passed. We look forward to this time when death, sorrow, suffering, tears shall be no more. But let's look at the gospel and the story of Zacchaeus. We have a hint there of the same thing happening to Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus climbed a tree to see our Lord passing by. And our Lord looked at him. He saw him and he said, Zacchaeus, make haste. Come down. For today, I mean to dwell with you. Today, I mean to dwell with you. Zacchaeus, you have climbed into the tree to see me. I'm going to reward you by coming to your house. I'm going to come to be with you. I must, in this translation it says, our Lord says, I must remain in thy house. So how did Zacchaeus react to that? He he made haste and came down. He obeyed. He made haste. He came down and he received our Lord. How? Joyfully. Joyfully. And he said, without any further ado, if I defrauded anyone, I will make it up fourfold. And I give half of my goods to the poor. Defrauding people and stealing from the poor is sadness. It causes tears not only to the victims, but to the perpetrator. Zacchaeus received our Lord with joy because his defrauding of people was over. That sadness was no more. He was joyful in being released of his sinful habits. Zacchaeus on that day receiving our Lord into his home. His home became a place of salvation and a prefigurement of the new Jerusalem. Where God has come to dwell and to be the God of the people. And Zacchaeus belonged to Jesus and Jesus belonged to Zacchaeus. And there was not going to be these same tears of sin in the house of Zacchaeus anymore. It was a prefigurement of this new Jerusalem where there will be a final victory. The Son of Man, our Lord said, is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Zacchaeus was lost. His soul was lost in sin. 
but it was found. Insofar as Zacchaeus had given up his sin, God continued to dwell in his house. But how did the people react? Oh, yes, the people. The people are always there. And how are they reacting? Yes, they are filled with the poison of envy. When the people saw it, what did they do? They murmured. They murmured. They complained. They complained that salvation was coming to him. They didn't want that. Why? There's no reason why. Envy. Sinful envy. Where is the temple of the Lord? The temple of the Lord is St. John Lateran. The temple of the Lord is every church that has the Blessed Sacrament. The temple of the Lord is the Blessed Virgin Mary. The temple of the Lord is Holy Mother Church. The temple of the Lord is the very person of Jesus Christ. The temple of the Lord is each of us who have received of the gifts of God. Are we in the temple or is the temple in us? Is Jesus with us? Or is Jesus in us? The answer is all of the above. In a most mysterious way, all of the above. At the end of the canon of the Mass, we say through him and with him and in him. Through him and with him and in him. All glory be to the Father. All glory be to the Father. Jesus is with us. He's also in us. But we are in him. The temple of the Lord is no longer one particular geographical place. It's much deeper reality, ultimately a spiritual one. It's one that we enjoy the presence of here in many ways, but ultimately we are looking forward to that day when all tears will be wiped away in the new Jerusalem. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.